Today's lesson is God's people repented. And it's taken out of the book of Nehemiah, chapters 8 through 13. Who knows what was <coughs> Nehemiah? What was he? Dan, what was Nehemiah? False God. He was not a false God. Favor. Nehemiah was a prophet. Ooh, ooh. Well, actually, he wasn't really a prophet as much as he was something else. No, Nehemiah was a person. Yes, he was a person. Thank you. Or who had that one? That was Thank Andrew. you, Captain Obvious. <laughs> Just so everybody knows, Nehemiah was a person. In case you thought that Nehemiah was a non-person, he was not an alien. Okay, Nehemiah, remember Nehemiah had a special job. Those of you who were here last week, if you remember, Nehemiah had a special job. He worked for whom? God. He, he worked for God, but who did he work for on the earth? Somebody was saying it. Somebody was saying it. Who, who was? Raina. He was working for the king. Oh, no. He was working for the king. Does anybody remember what he did for the king? He tasted his food to make sure he wasn't poisoned. He was the cupbearer. He was the cupbearer. Uh, what were you going to say, Robert? Uh, I need water. You need water. Okay. It's right there. Go ahead and right back there. On the right side in the blue. Just nope. Just grab your cup. And then down below, just push it against the lever. Just push it against the lever. Now push it against... That there you go. Push your cup against that. All right. Now, Nehemiah had a special job. He was cupbearer to the king. You see, because not everybody liked the king. It's true. Not everybody likes. Not everybody likes their leaders. Let me ask you this. Okay. This, I'm going to ask a question, and your answer will not leave this room, okay? Nobody outside this room is going to know what your answer is, all right? Raise your hands if you go to school. I don't go to school. Raise your hands if you go to school. Who goes to school here? Me. All right, put your hands down. Raise your hands if you have... More than one teacher. Okay, some of you do. Some of you older kids have more than one teacher. Some of you younger kids have just one teacher. Okay, put your hands down. <clears throat> Raise your hand if you have a teacher that you like. Actually, all of them are my favorite. Oh, picky. <laughs> all right. Now, now, Miss Faith is a teacher, so we're going to wait for her to leave the room before we ask this next question. You can put your hands down. You can put your hands down. Okay, she's gone now. Because Miss, Miss Faith teaches kindergarten. Yep, she teaches kindergarten. She be offended if she said Oh, okay, she's not here anymore. Raise your hand. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh. Miss, Miss Jean is here. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, just, just leave it on the table okay. and we'll make sure that she gets checked out. Okay. Come on, Naya. Are you taking Naya, Naya too? I mean, Naya. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll go get your Bible. Sorry, Dave. Interrupting. No, no worries. No worries. Okay, get your Bible, honey. It happens. <laughs> Say bye, everybody. Say bye, bye Dave. Bye. 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 Okay, because I said that oh, yes. this isn't going to go out of the room, we're going to wait for Miss Tina to leave. <laughs> she doesn't teach you, uh, teacher. You'll find out why in a little bit. You guys, you guys are going to tell, you guys are going to tell me a secret, okay? Oh my God. Just you, me, and the camera. This is going on YouTube. Listen up, listen up. I said you on YouTube. If you have a teacher that you don't like, raise your hand. I have a terrible teacher at school. Oh, oh. Kaylee. Okay, hands up. 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 H
hands down, hands down. The truth is that, listen, listen guys, the truth is that we all have people, look, I, I'm not in school, I've got bosses. I've had bosses that I like, and I've had bosses that I didn't like. Truth is we all do, we all have people, teachers or whatever, that some that we like, some that we don't like. Some people didn't like the king. And you know what they would try to do to the king? They'd try to kill him. They'd try to poison him. So it was Nehemiah's job, it was Nehemiah's job to take the cup and to taste whatever, not just the cup but the food, whatever was brought before the king, Nehemiah's job was to taste it. Make sure that it wasn't poisoned. Because if it was poisoned, guess what would happen? The king would die. No, Nehemiah would die. Because Nehemiah tasted it first. And they thought it was better for somebody like Nehemiah to die than for the king to die. So Nehemiah's job was to keep the king safe. And by doing that, he would put his own life at risk. But Nehemiah was very uh, respected by the king. He was very much respected by the king. And so Nehemiah had gotten word that Jerusalem, the city that he was from, was just a ruin. The walls were torn down. The city was burned with fire. And he, he asked the king. He was sad in front of the king. He'd never been sad before. And the king noticed, Nehemiah, you're sad. And Nehemiah was afraid because he thought he was going to get in trouble for that. He could die. And so he was afraid. And the king said, no, 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 this, your, your heart is sad. What do you need? And so Nehemiah told him, the city where I'm from is in ruins. It's in terrible shape. Please let me go back to my people and build up my city, build up my home city. And the king said, yes, you may. So Nehemiah came and he directed the building of the walls of Jerusalem. Now, was everybody happy about that? No, no. No, they were not. Why? Why do you think they weren't happy? Because some of them were uh, the, uh, some of them were Israelites. They were not Israelites, and they didn't want to see Jerusalem built up. They didn't want to see Jerusalem succeed. And they got the. They were. They 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 kind of participated in it. They didn't actually destroy it, but they they kind of helped. And so. They don't want to see it rebuilt. But God was with Nehemiah, and they began to build the walls. Now, the lesson today is God's people repented. How many know what repented means? What does it mean to repent? I'm going to give this one to Dominic. Help? Nope, that doesn't mean to help. Hmm. I don't know. Should I give it to Kaya, or should I give it to Favor? They both had their hands up about the same time. I'm going to go with Kaya on this one. To apologize or say that you're sorry. Okay, but more than that, favor? Not just to apologize and say that you're sorry, it's to make sure that you don't do it again. Exactly. That's exactly it. You see, repenting is more than just saying you're sorry. You see, I could come up to Josiah and I could smack him on the face and say, Oh, Josiah, Josiah, I'm sorry. Now, if I were to come up to you and smack you on the face again and say, Josiah, I'm sorry, would you believe that? Would you believe me? You say, Dave, you're lying. Brother Dave, you're lying to me. You're not sorry because you did it again. That's what repenting is. Repenting is not just saying sorry. Repenting, Levi, stay over here, please. <laughs> Levi, over here, please. It's literally like this. Pretend that God is here. I turn my back on God, and I'm walking away from God. By walking away from God, I'm doing wrong. And then I come to my senses, and I say, what am I doing? This is dumb. I shouldn't be doing this. And I turn around, and I start walking back to God. In other words, I stop doing the wrong things, and I start doing the right things. Xander. Got a question or a comment? You had your hand up. It's All right. 12. Okay, that's nice. So that's what repenting is. It is saying you're sorry. Kaya was right. It's saying you're sorry. 
But favor had the, the rest of it. Not only is it saying you're sorry, you stop doing the wrong things and you start doing the right things. Now, Israel as a nation had been doing the wrong things. Can anybody tell me what were some of the wrong things that they did? Somebody besides favor. Can somebody besides favor tell me what they were doing that was wrong? Favor, go ahead. Since they were stealing and killing. They were stealing and killing. Raina? Raina? You forgot? Okay. Anybody else? They were disobeying God. They were disobeying God. They were worshiping false gods. They were That's one of the things, yes. Do not have any other gods before me. Um, they, homes. they were ruining people's homes. They were stealing, weren't they? Yeah. They were stealing, they were killing, they were moving into other people's homes, taking away other people's homes. Swelling. Yeah, that's part of it. They were using God's name like they shouldn't. That's part of it. All those things that they were doing, they were doing just about everything wrong that they possibly could do wrong. And God, God was very patient with them. For 500, almost 500 years, God was very patient with them. And finally, God just said, enough! That's it. I can't stand it anymore. And Israel had an army come against them and burned Jerusalem, and they stopped being a nation. Their people were taken, most of their people were taken off to Babylon, and they stayed there for 70 years. Now, again, all of you guys are pretty young. In 70 years, you guys are going to be old. Every one of you guys is going to be old in 70 years. My grandma's 70. Be 81 years old. Just to give you a perspective, my dad died when he was 81. So, that's... How old are you, Raina? Eight, so you'd be 78. Kaya, how old are you? 11. So you'd be 81. Nine. You'd be 79. 78 and a half. Nine. 79. 76. You see, we're talking about old people, aren't we? Old. Um, nine and a half. Nine and a half. 79. So you guys be old. If you're, if you're still alive, some people don't even live that long. Okay? So, they were there that long, but finally it took that long for the children of Israel to come to their senses and say, Hey! This is dumb! What we're doing, this is dumb! We need to stop disobeying God, and we need to start obeying God. That's what happened, God's people. And so finally, they came to their senses and said, we are going to obey God's laws. We're going to obey God. This We've been, we tried disobedience, and look what happened to us. Now, we're going to obey God. And they did. They turned to God with all of their hearts, and they obeyed God, and they kept the feasts that God told them to keep. They kept the celebrations that God told them. They obeyed God's word. Now, were they perfect? No. No. Newsflash. None of you are perfect. None of you are perfect. I am not perfect. Miss Faith is not perfect. Miss Gigi is not perfect. Not one of us are perfect. Not a single soul is perfect. Here's the thing though, that God loves you anyway. God loves you anyway. And if at any time you realize, hey, you know what, I've been doing wrong, all you have to do is stop and say, first of all, God, I'm sorry for doing wrong. I'm sorry. And here's the thing. You can't fake God out. You can't deceive God. You can't lie to God. God understands your heart. He knows what your heart is thinking. He knows. And, but when you from a true heart say, God, I am sorry. And then to prove that you're sorry, you stop doing the wrong things and you start doing the right things. 
God will forgive you. And it'll be just like you never did anything wrong in your whole life until you do something wrong again. And then you have to... But here's the thing. How many times do you think God's going to forgive you? Once? No. No. Maybe three times? No. Five times? No. Yes. A thousand times? No. Yes. Even more than a thousand. No. Ten thousand times? No. No. The whole life, no. Yeah. The whole life, no. Here's the thing. As long as your heart is right, God is going to forgive you as often as you ask him to. Now, <coughs> look, I got three sisters. I got a brother. I had three sisters. I have two now. But I have a brother. And when we were kids, they would do things wrong to me. And I'd do things wrong to them. And they'd come back and they'd say they were sorry and they meant it. And they stopped doing it for a time. And then they started doing it again. And they did come back and say, I'm sorry. You know how many times, you know what it means to, when somebody says, I'm sorry, and you say, it's okay? You know what that's called? Forgiveness. forgiveness. It's called forgiveness. God forgives us for our sins. In return, we are supposed to forgive others. Now, they asked Jesus, how many times should I forgive my brother? Seven times? No. Seventy times? No. Jesus said, 70 times 7. Who are my math people here? Who's my math people? 70 times 7. 490. 490. In a day. If somebody does wrong to you and with a right heart comes back and says, I'm sorry, 490 times in a day, we forgive them. That's kind of tough. But here's the question. How often do you want to be forgiven by God? Do you want to be forgiven by God every time you say you're sorry? Then we forgive others every time. See, God expects us to be like Him. He forgives us. All right, so finally God's people repented and God made them a nation again. And they finished the walls and they built up the walls and they had a big celebration. Woo hoo! The old people were crying because they had That was at that was at the beginning when they started building the temple. But when they finally built the walls, they just had a big old party. Because the walls were finally done. And God prospered his people because they repented. God made his people uh, they, he made them rich again because they repented and they started to do what was right. And that's what I want to tell you. If you keep your heart right before the Lord, if you do what's right, God will make sure things go well for you. Now, if you do wrong and you say, you know what, this, I shouldn't be doing this. And I'm going to turn back and say sorry to God and start doing the right things. God will forgive you. Always. Whenever you do something that God doesn't like, you need to stop and you need to change your ways. And God will forgive you and He'll restore you again. Yes, please. I want everybody to bow your heads and close your eyes. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the example that you have given us with Israel. Lord, even though they sinned against you, and even though you had to punish them, when they finally turned their hearts around and decided to obey you, then you prospered them and you healed their land just like you promised that you would. And Lord, as we live our lives, may we never turn from you. But Lord, if we ever mess up and we, and we come back to you with a proper heart and say, I'm sorry, and stop doing the wrong things and start doing the right things, Lord, I know that you will forgive us and that you will begin to prosper us as well. I pray, Lord, a blessing on everyone that's here this morning, that you would keep them. Keep them safe, and keep them in your love and in your care. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right.